This Monday Masterclass picks up where we left off in our previous Masterclass, in which we saw not only how simple it is to set up a staging site, but also why we should use it to make changes and updates and run tests and so on, all within a safe and controlled environment, that of a local version of our WordPress website on our computer or laptop, rather than risk damaging our live or production site. Now, since then, we've been following the comments and feedback that you've all been very kind in providing, and it's precisely because we value your input that we'll begin this week's Masterclass by answering some great questions that you've raised and clarify the important points that you've brought up. For the purpose of staging, we need to establish two types of WordPress websites, or, if you like, two groups of Elementor users. On the one hand, we have websites that include user data, such as data from forms or orders placed by users. This also includes sites that contain user-generated content, such as uploaded images and files and comments, etc. On the other hand, we have sites that only rely on the content that we, the site moderators, provide. Now, the reason we make this distinction is that we need to know whether or not we should be concerned about the data that was added to our live website while we were working on the backup version of our site in the local isolated environment. Now, if we're the only people inputting data to our site, we can avoid adding any data while we're working on the changes and just push the updated version of our site in much the same way that we would a brand new site. So if this screen looks familiar, it should, because it's exactly where we left off in our last masterclass. Now, we're in Flywheel's local app, which is what we use to upload a backup copy of our live or production website onto a staging environment on our computer or laptop. Now, perhaps you've done something similar using Bitnami or XAMPP. For the purpose of this masterclass, we've added a menu and a header. Now, once we've finished updating and testing our site, we want to upload our new version from the local environment to the live site. The simplest way to do this is by using a migration plugin, and we'll be using one of the most popular among them, the all-in-one WP migration plugin. We'll install this plugin on both our local and our live WordPress installations, the same way as we would any other plugin. We'll go to the WordPress dashboard, and in the plugin tab, we'll click Add New, search for all-in-one WP migration, we'll download it, and activate it. Now, with that done, we'll go to the WordPress dashboard in our local environment, and in the left menu bar, we'll click on the all-in-one WP migration, then select Export. Now, you can go over this nice list of advanced options here, and of course, select anything that is relevant. In the settings, we'll select File and Export. Essentially, all we're doing is creating a backup of our site, as it is on the local environment. And we'll just download the migration file, once it's done, we'll go to our Live Sites WordPress dashboard. In the left menu bar, we'll click on All-in-One WP Migration, but this time we'll select Import, and in the settings, we'll select Import from File, we'll locate our exported file, and click on Open. This might take a little longer than a few moments, depending on the size of the site, but nothing on our Live Site has changed yet. A warning will appear in case we've forgotten that doing this will overwrite everything on our live site, including comments, orders, etc. As this isn't a problem for this particular website, we can click on Proceed, and we'll just speed this up a little as the old files are replaced by the new ones. And we're done. Our new version is up and running. Not that there should be anything wrong with the site, but we'll check it, because it's always better to be safe than sorry. Perfect. When it comes to our other category of WordPress and Elementor users who rely on data that comes from an external source, data that comes from the users and their subscriptions, purchase orders, even comments, there are two ways of pushing a newly updated site from the staging environment to the live site without risk of losing any data that was registered there. One, unfortunately, involves messing around with individual files and folders through an FTP or SFTP interface. The other is through a hosting service. Now, whichever way you choose to push your site, it is extremely important to back up your live site and data before you do anything else. Remember, it's always better to be safe than sorry.
Now to do this, you can use the all-in-one WP migration plugin that we just mentioned, or duplicator, or migrate DB. Once your live site is backed up, the easiest way to push our site is through our host server. Now, there are plenty of WordPress web hosting services that offer staging services, whereby a completely independent, separate environment is created on the hosting server to run all of our tests and try out our new ideas. And these include hosts such as Bluehost, SiteGround, even Flywheel's premium hosting package includes this option. And of course, we'll be posting links to all of these and more in the show notes below. If we're honest, Bluehost is the more popular because they offer their staging service for free. But then again, you might prefer SiteGround because of their superior quality of service. This is something that we must decide for ourselves based on the size of our site and the volume of traffic. But we also need to consider the revenue that we'll need to achieve in order to cover our costs and whether our choice will help or harm our business goals. And this is where we need to really be honest with ourselves because if our website is also our livelihood, then hosting is not one of those places where we want to cut corners or scrimp and save. Local staging, a staging environment on our own computer or laptop, has many benefits. Chief among them is speed. Working locally, we'll see test results and responses far quicker, making it the perfect environment for huge overhauls and possibly initial builds too. While host staging is not as fast as local staging, it is ideal for routine testing and updating because it can still handle changes to graphics, written content, updates and tests quite nicely, so long as they're not too big. The major drawback is inevitably the price tag, as several hosting services charge extra fees for staging. However, these fees include support, which could save a lot of time and money in the long run. But bottom line, all host sites that offer staging services have similar features that allow us to push the new version of our site from the staging to the live sites with minimum effort and zero worry. Everything that we have seen and discussed in this masterclass is used by professional web builders the world over. If you use any of these methods or would like to suggest an alternative, perhaps easier method, or you have any advice that could help other users, then by all means let us know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this masterclass and you'd like to see more, then make sure you click on the subscribe button and tap that bell so that you don't miss out on our next masterclass. After all, our goal is to be the best at helping others excel at their craft. Thanks for watching. Cheers.